Teaching art needs constant inspiration, and this means inspiring the artist within the teacher. In this film, we're going to follow Darren O'Connor, a teacher at Welling Secondary School, as he spends his Saturday at a workshop in Poole, run by the Artist Teacher Scheme. I'm a new teacher, so that means putting a hell of a lot of heart and soul into teaching. And if you're going to make authentic artwork, you need to put the same heart and soul into your artwork. So I'm finding it extremely difficult to be um, the artist I am and the teacher that um, I have to be if I'm going to do this. I just dread the idea of it being another boring school outing. I get the feeling that this is going to be slightly different. We're going to see how the artist teacher scheme works in practice as Darren takes part in discussion and group work with other teachers. Could we build a hexagon sculpture over these? Oh, we've got quite like we've got time. Before taking some new ideas back to the classroom. That sounds impossible, a classroom made out of jelly that can be picked up with a, with a propeller. If it's impossible, it doesn't matter, you just do it and you have a good time. The study gallery in Poole forms part of Poole College and is open to the public and schools alike as an educational centre. Whereas normally they'd focus on students, today's workshop is for nine teachers from around the country. But the day's meant to be enjoyable. Uh, so we really not made it heavy in terms of handouts or about um, sort of lectures about education. It's meant to be a very much hands-on day after the first session where we really explore the exhibition we've got so that you've got that as a resource to the activities for the rest of the day. Yeah. It'd be great with the green light in though, you know, for the cactus thing. Yeah. The day is about a course for teachers remembering that it's Saturday, that on a Saturday I think you want a different sort of course than you want on a weekday. The starting point was to ensure that we were running a course which was um, at an adult level, that it was about trying to, uh, trying to offer something for people to engage with at their own level and to make adult responses and to promote a debate between and dialogue between the people on the course, rather than trying to do a course which is tricks for teachers, tricks to take back into the classroom with short-term Ends. Yeah, this is definitely my favourite thing in the whole show because it's, um, it's just so simple, so effective and so simple. It's one of those things that you wish you'd uh, thought of yourself, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right, this architectural model and this object here um, are sort of fused together. And one level there's a lifestyle issue in, in relation to this model. The other is um, a really important piece of social design. The point of this whole institution is to engage in, in education um, at every level and involve everybody. There is on hand you know, a great environment and a great level of resources and uh, interaction with objects I think prompts and promotes debate. And when you take on the flat either as an owner or as a, a tenant you get a smart car with your flat and the car goes into a lift at the side of the building and it goes to your front door. It's a bit frightening actually. It'd be very noisy for people living there. It'd be difficult, especially if we're on the lower, speaking from experience, it'd be difficult. A key part of the artist teacher scheme is discussion and debate. After a gallery tour, the forum's open for the teachers to discuss what they've seen. The world of design, I'd say, is just as um, diverse as art. I certainly wouldn't take it to Everest if, uh, as my first choice of tent, but I think for the purposes of what it is, it's great. I'd still take it away on the weekend just because it's a really great piece of design. Has anyone got any comments on it, what they think of it, good or bad? It seems or... like a, a big red mouth. I think it's um, quite sexual. It's got a sort of organic form to it, hasn't it? And so whether you think it's sexual or not sexual, it's, it's, certainly, it's certainly organic, isn't it? The group move upstairs to be dealt their creative challenge. The project that we have set as an outline brief is to design a mobile schoolroom for use in variously and genuinely alternative locations and an unpredictable climate in 2020. And how it moves and who moves it is fundamental to the problem. We presented a challenge which is promotes group discussion, group debate, the sharing of ideas, the sharing of experiences, um, with the intention that it works towards some form of design solution. <laughs> Oh, the one thing about that mobile classroom, this, this um, life um, 
centre, whatever it is, is that, that you can have that they can simulate daytime and nighttime within the same pod, and and that for teaching that's fantastic with children. But if you're away somewhere else, somewhere you want to sort of um, be able to see the outside in, that's why we're yes. there, isn't it? Well, they could be just like those sort of inflatable curtain walls yeah. that we've got like downstairs. I'm not sure how you're doing the solar power inflatable No, I suppose we're relying on, um, like, on the technology to come up with the Whereas sure we, sure we wanted to do activities which were not about people practicing an individual technique, but which were, you know, trying to make the day social and informative and constructive and to give people a group task enables them I think to interact with each other to identify their own particular skills and strengths in relation to each other and through the activity to exchange skills so that uh, not only do we make a stimulus and an input but they actually learn from each other and their own experiences. Could we, uh, could we build a, like a, a hexagon sculpture over these? Oh, yeah. Quite like if we've got time. Have we got enough? The real problem is that you should be working with hexagonal shapes and not, not squares. Yes. <laughs> if you're going to make a, a beehive shape. We started off with the idea of the, the classroom being airborne, so there were many kind of um, possibilities there. Uh, the kind of Harrier jump jet Pegasus engine kind of thing, um, a kind of a hovercraft scenario. Um, but we liked we liked a kind of a, a, a helicopter style pod which can arrive, pick things up, drop them off, and then disappear. So uh, so we've gone with that, and uh, we, I think there were, there were some points during the process of designing this concept when we became a little mechanical and everything sounded a bit too possible. So um, we managed to veer away from that with um, with the, uh, the the idea that in the future between now and 2020 someone will invent a liquefied kind of solar panel which gave us um, gave us more options and made it kind of more interesting anyway. So, uh, so that's where we are at the moment. I think the day has potential success because it mixes NQTs with training teachers with people who've had a career in, edu in art education for some while. Our experience is, is that newly qualified teachers um, have, have a freshness about them, have an energy about them, and actually aren't phased by some of the problems that have ground us down for 20 years. So what you're saying is each, that each one of yeah, these is a separate, is a separate yeah. space? Yeah. Yeah. And the not all of them, but you know, the ones that sort of make sense the ones that right. around here. Yeah, today's work for me, the workshop's worked. Because it's only been two phases, I haven't, it hasn't been annoying, you know, but for want of a better way of saying it, it's been quite easy to do. Lots of small phases might have been quite annoying and the day may have seemed too chopped up and, and dragged on, but it's been good and it's gone quickly, but in a good way it's gone quickly because it's been quite enjoyable. I've enjoyed today because it's um, opened up other possibilities that I can now see um, through posing more open-ended questions to the children in design activities that they could actually have a more explorative, um, investigative approach to their own work. It's design based is quite interesting because obviously within my role much more of it is the art side of art and design as opposed to design um, and I think that's been quite interesting how it's acceptable to do something like design because often you leave that to design technology side of it. In terms of uh, teaching, I think what today's done is has, has possibly prompted me to, to teach a lesson um, that, that in some way could be related to today's experience. We need the lights, it's okay. Okay, can we have everybody listen? Please guys, quickly, bags and coats off and let's get ready to work. The following week, Darren adapts some of the ideas he picked up from the artist teacher scheme for his year seven class. Rosie's going to come around now, you're going to take a piece of paper. On each piece of paper, there is a problem, something that needs to be designed, okay? You need to design it. The overall objective was really to give um, the students um, an opportunity to design something in the way that I was asked to design something on Saturday. That sounds impossible, a classroom made out of jelly that can be picked up with a, with a propeller. But that's what we designed, because we weren't really bothered about what's possible and, not, and what's not possible. Not at that stage. We wanted to have a lot of fun. We wanted to design something using our imaginations, which could be really interesting. That's basically what we were looking for. It doesn't have to be possible. Okay? That was the um, theme, theme on Saturday, and I want that to be the theme here.
Okay, so if it's impossible, it doesn't matter, you just do it and you have a good time. They answered little problems which I'd written down on pieces of paper beforehand, things like design a football, um, which will always allow you to score a goal. Question. Have a look at your question if you haven't already. Don't let anybody else see what it is. We want people to guess what it is later on. And uh, some of the other little problems that I wrote out were, were problems that they're used to, like um, a tie which will tuck itself in because they're constantly being stopped and has to tuck the ties in or sort of the shirts out. So the problems were related to little experiences that they have every day at Welling. You will make sure that you put lots of colour on these though, won't you? Because we need to be able to see them. Interestingly, um, one of the problems that I encountered during the workshop on Saturday was um, identifying clear roles for each of the members of the team. Now, we didn't know each other well enough to kind of to identify those roles. It didn't happen in the end. I can't wait, to, can't wait for you guys to um, explain how this works. I think I've got an idea. It might be like radio control. Today, I was looking out for roles developing within the teams and um, it's quite interesting. They were very small teams, there were only twos or threes, but some people, pref some of the children prefer to draw and some prefer to make, and, uh, but they were still in dialogue with each other, making and drawing, and uh, that was interesting. Guys, can you put everything down? Don't have anything in your hands. Thank you very much. Okay, now it's, uh, look around the room, just have a look. So, anybody, could anybody guess, make a guess at the thing that these girls were trying to design by looking at this work? Is it a tie changing colours? A tie that changes colours? Mm -hmm. It's partly that. It's you partly can, that. It's not. You can, look. Options of changing colour on the remote that comes with it. No, wow. that, one, yeah. that was good. That was a good guess. Is it to um, take it on and off? Tie to put it on and off. Isn't yeah. it? It is, isn't it? What was your question, girls? Um, it was um, a tie that moves. Made for electric. Because what it is, behind the t on the back of the tie, it's got an on and off switch, and when you switch it on, you've got remote control. You've got options. You can have the tie does up a normal tie, a bow tie, or you can change colours. Brilliant! Wow, what a good job. You I think the students took to the task quite well, really. I don't think they're that fussy. I just think that they believe, you know, they believe that there's, there are good reasons for doing what they do, and. And at the end of the day, it's all about drawing and using your imagination. And even though you know we were we were discussing design, um, you know, all most of the work I teach is about employing the imagination. So I don't think they were phased at all. I think they enjoyed it. Um, what did you design, guys? A football that always scores. A football that always scores. So how did you deal with the problem? Remote control. It's remote control. Remote control football so you could get your mate to stay in the stand. Every time you shoot, the ball would go in the goal because your mate in the stand is guiding it in. That has to be invented, doesn't it, really? I thought there was an interesting debate kicked up on Saturday and um, that's what mainly inspired uh, today's lesson. Um, the idea of the idea that someone can successfully move through um, uh, a design process into fine art and, and back again. I think that there is a line between fine art and design. Um, design ultimately is for selling, fine art is for expressing the way you see the world. I see this course uh, really as an opportunity for people to come and actually use their own experience and their own expertise as artists, as teachers, um, and to use that specialism in uh, a sort of a, a debate amongst friends as much as colleagues, you know, people who've got a similar interest, similar motivation, maybe similar outlook.